If someone could turn in their Bibles to Philippians 4, verse 7. Actually, uh, I'll read it with y'all. Philippians 4, verse 7. It says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So uh, that's my verse, like, just the main, the verse theme, I guess, for my whole message. Uh, let's play it real quick. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And uh, I thank you for this day. Please speak to everyone. Uh, open everyone's hearts. And uh, please help everyone understand it. As this in your name. Amen. Amen. Alright, so, um, basically, my, the name of my whole message today will be The World Today. And just how advanced it is, really. And actually, not really advanced, but just like, Talking about how like it changes so much now because it's so different than it was back in Bible times or even like before then, and so uh, and my main like topic today is guard your hearts and guard your minds, and some of y'all might be thinking that the heart and mind are pretty much the same thing. You know, I'm telling you, it's not. There's they're two completely different things, and I'm going to go into detail about each like the parts of the heart and the parts of the mind. So uh, yeah. So first is going to be the parts of the heart. All right, um, parts of the heart consist of like our spiritual aspects, our emotional aspects, and our moral aspects. You know, emotional is like you know when we uh, the way we express love towards someone and hate or anger, even you know, that's all emotion. And then our morals is like what we think of as right and wrong. And our spiritual aspects are like just you know what we believe in the book right here and um, just Christianity in general. So uh, someone could read Proverbs 4 verses 23. I'm going to go into the heart aspect first. Above all, let's your heart for it is the wellspring of life. If y'all uh, heard that correctly, it says at the end it is the wellspring of life. Uh, wellspring is like the the mouth of something of something like great. It could be like the mouth of a great lake or something. So basically, your heart is like the the start, pretty much of life. It's like your whole life is defined by what you put into your heart. And so, uh, another verse. Uh, someone can read Matthew fifteen verses nineteen. <clears throat> So, you know, that's uh, some very, like, deadly sin, you know, is uh, just evil thoughts in general, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, as you all heard. You know, that all comes from the heart, and it's, like, the deepest kind of, like, the deepest kind of emotional attack on someone is from these. So, um, really, you know, I gave you three examples of the heart, which was emotional, spiritual, and moral. So uh, I'm going to give you all like physical, worldly examples like today, how they relate to, like, to it. Um, an emotional example would be the divorce rate in America today. It's 50%, as many of y'all probably already knew that. But that's kind of, that's a big number, you know. Um, we have about 70 people in my graduating class in high school. And so I'm thinking, like, you know, we come back for a 15-year high school reunion, you know. 35 of us are still going to be married, and the other 35 are going to be divorced. You know that that kind of gets to me, and uh, makes me think about how like how high of a number that is, and that's just the emotional aspect in the world today. And uh, so, a spiritual aspect. This actually takes place in Africa. The there's a church in Ghana, Africa called African Faith Tabernacle, and the head pastor there, his name is Reverend Paul Nkansa. He was arrested last August. This happened like kind of recently. Rested last August for the rape of five sisters there. And I mean, like, I've, uh, this is in Ghana, Africa, like I said, and my school does mission work there every year. So, I, like, it's during spring break, and when they come back, they show, like, slideshows and just videos and pictures of the whole place. And those people in Ghana are so broken. So, it kind of amazes me, like, how a spiritual leader like that can be an example to those people down there. Because they don't have much food, water, clothes, you know. And, uh, like a spiritual leader in their community is has this kind of behavior, and I mean it just like it makes you realize how like bad the world can be. So uh, 
that's a spiritual aspect. Now, next is on the heart is the moral aspect. Um, this is another statistic that's in the U.S. One in ten individuals in the U.S. are homosexual, and that's in, uh, including men and women. And so that's ten percent. So if you look at the whole population of the U.S., according to the twenty eleven uh, July census, it was three hundred and twelve million. So that's about thirty one point two million people in the U.S. are homosexual. I mean, that's a big number, you know. And that's uh, this. A lot of people are spiritually in darkness and moral darkness. You know, Amen. And, uh, Amen. And, uh, Amen. You know, that's uh, that's pretty much all I have on the heart aspect. Uh, the second part of my message is going to be about the mind. So the mind consists of uh, reasoning, perception, and judgment. Reasoning is like our logic and what we learn in like school. Uh, perception and judgment kind of go hand in hand. Now, perception is the way we view things that happen, and judgment is like, it's, judgment is an opinion, but it's what we uh, kind of hypothesize as what is right and wrong in the world. Or to ourselves, though. It's like a personal, like, decision. And uh, if I can get someone to read Romans 12, verses 2. Well See, this verse says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I mean, that's in the first part. So, God wants us to renew our minds with, uh, like, the truth of you know, what's out there and how the world is changing. So, uh, like I said before, you know, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the first part. The three parts of the mind are reasoning, perception, and judgment. So, a reasoning example, in, like, in today's, like, society, is uh, uh, the Big Bang Theory. You know, that's like something that's popular in school. And, you know, big, if any of y'all don't know, the Big Bang Theory is pretty much like there was a small bit of matter at the beginning of time and that imploded on itself and created this big universe that we exist in. And many scientists and atheists want to believe that instead of the seven day creation because they don't want to believe in God. They, they just don't want to. And uh, the Big Bang Theory is like, it's a, a popular theory that's taught in public universities and public schools all over the country. And they're detesting the seven day theory. And that's like the logic part of it, you know, that comes into our lives. That's the way the world like, is changing constantly. So uh, the judgmental aspect of it in society today is uh, many politicians today refer to their law books on what is right instead of the Bible. Now law books are based off of the constitution that this nation was founded on. And those were some, they were very smart men that wrote that, and very brave too, but that's not, they're not God. Like, it's plain and simple, they're not God. The Bible is God-inspired. That should be the, the course of what is right and wrong in the world. You know, and uh, many politicians today, they, they'd rather go to a law book than the Bible. So uh, that's, that is the judgment part. So now is a perception part of the mind. So, uh, President Barack Obama favors a legal right to abortion. And basically what that means is uh, he favors, or he likes the, he supports the idea that everyone should have the right to have an abortion, whether it's right or wrong. He thinks that everyone should have that right. And I mean, that's, that, in my case, that's wrong. You know, if, like, if, whether they think it's right or wrong, I know it's wrong. No one should have that right, you know, no matter what the situation is. And, uh, you know, that's our president of the U.S. He has so much, like, influential power here. And not just here, but all over the world, people revere him. And, uh, you know, it's kind of scary how, how much influential power one person can have. And uh, that's pretty much it, just for worldly examples, you know. It, the world we're living is, in is, like, it's changing very fast and changing at a, uh, a very scary rate, you know. And I'm just thinking, like, 20 years down the line, it's going to be a very scary place to live. And... Uh, but there's one verse that I really like. Uh, if y'all could turn to Isaiah 41, verses 10. I'll read it, though. Uh, I think this verse can give us all comfort when we're, like... Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. 
Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes, uh, I'll continue on my eleven on the It says, After that, all who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing in perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. You know, that's our com I think that's the main comforting verse, like in these troubling times, you know, because economically, you know how the world is plummeting, and we don't know, we honestly don't know what's going to happen. And morally, the world standards are changing all around. And uh, the influential power that they have on like society as a whole is very scary. And uh, so, I mean, I'm just, like I was saying before, we need to guard our hearts and we need to guard our minds for anything that's to come in this world. So uh, that's pretty much my message today. Um, sorry if it was short or sloppy again, but uh, I hope I touched on this heart. Thank you.